Hey, what's up guys? It's Scares here. Now our first story of today comes from the YouTuber Mr. Beast. So for those of you who don't know, a few months ago the YouTubers Mr. Beast and Mark Rober had started a huge campaign to help clean up the world's oceans. They called this Team Seas and they promised that for every one dollar that's donated, they're going to clean up one pound of trash in the ocean. So this is obviously a big undertaking and there has been a ton of people that have donated so far. They already have over 25 million dollars in this campaign and it looks like it is very close to their goal of 30 million. So they're trying to hit 30 million by the end of this year. So there's only a few days left. And Mr. Beast tweeted this out just yesterday. He says, Team C has just crossed 25 million pounds of trash out of the ocean. And then he says that an anonymous person just donated $2 million to the campaign. And he says, we only have four days left. Go donate so we can hit our goal. So Mr. Beast still needs around $5 million to be able to reach his goal of $30 million by the end of the year. And that doesn't seem very easy, especially because there's only a few days left. But many YouTubers right now are trying to help Mr. Beast reach his goal. They're donating their own money. They're getting their viewers to help donate as well. And we've even decided to make a pretty sizable donation to this too. So I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can check out this Team C's fundraiser. And hopefully we can help Mr. Beast reach his goal. We're going to obviously try to help out just a little bit more so we can try to get them over the edge to $30 million. There's going to be a lot more people donating the last few days and i'm sure we're going to see some other big donors come in i mean for those of you who don't remember in mr beast's last big campaign called team trees elon musk actually came in and donated a million dollars to the campaign and we might see other big time donations from billionaires and just rich people over the next few days that will help mr beast actually reach his goal now our next story for today comes from the YouTuber known as Sniperwolf. So for those of you who don't know, Sniperwolf is one of the largest creators on YouTube. She has over 30 million subscribers and she makes millions and millions of views every single video. She does a lot of reaction content where she reacts to other videos and TikToks and things that people find funny and people love her videos. But over the last few days, Sniperwolf has been in a lot of controversy because of a situation that happened with one of her fans. Now this fan is named Kiara. She is terminally ill with cancer and one of her final Final wishes is to see one of her favorite YouTubers, Sniperwolf. She wants to see Sniperwolf. She wants to talk with Sniperwolf. She wants Sniperwolf to acknowledge her. So just last week, the YouTuber Adam22 made a video with Kiara, and in this video, he was trying to make her final wishes come true, and he gifted her family $10,000. So a very wholesome video. And in this video, Adam tells Kiara that he might be able to get her in contact with Sniperwolf because he might know someone who knows Sniperwolf as well. This is a big deal for Kiara. You could tell she was extremely happy about this, and it looks like Sniper Wolf really was able to get in contact with Kiara's family. She actually contacted Kiara's mom over Instagram and she says, hello, I would love to send her a video message or to chat with her. So Kiara's mom responds saying that she would love to talk with her and then Sniper Wolf responds saying that she would love to do it tomorrow. Kiara's mom then responds again saying, yes, please. Then Sniper Wolf responds back saying, sure, if not tomorrow, then Sunday. So obviously Kiara's family was super happy that Sniper Wolf responded and they ended up posting about this on Instagram and Sniper Wolf saw this and she got upset about it she says hi please don't post messages i don't usually do this i don't want other people to spam me to video message thanks so kira's mom ended up deleting her post about sniper wolf and it looked like sniper wolf was going to contact them and actually send kira a video or maybe even call her on christmas on that day but a ton of time passed and by the end of the night sniper wolf responds back saying hey sorry i didn't have time today i'll let you know tomorrow merry christmas kira's mom then responds the next morning saying perfect just let us know and then she didn't actually get any messages back from sniper wolf the whole day until late that night she responds saying hello let us know if today works if not tomorrow is good but can we maybe set up a specific time now sniper wolf responds back saying hello i can in like two hours if that works the mom responds again saying that is 11 p.m over on this side we live in massachusetts and kira will most likely not be awake so sniper wolf responds saying oh okay hopefully tomorrow does any time during the day work she says yes so the next day rolls around and Sniper Wolf has not contacted the mother. She still hasn't sent this short video that she said that she was going to do. And the mother says, hey, Kiara's up. I don't know if you're around. So now Sniper Wolf responds back saying, hey, sorry, I won't be home for another two hours. It might be too late. We can keep trying, but my days are usually very busy. Now, this is what has stirred up so much controversy surrounding this situation because Sniper Wolf only had to send a short little video or just do a quick little FaceTime call or chat with this 
this girl. It was going to be only a few minutes and she kept putting it off. Keep in mind, this girl is terminally ill. She's currently dying, okay? And the mother herself got fed up with Sniper Wolf over this. She responds to Sniper Wolf saying, you know my daughter looks up to you. She loves you. Watched you her whole cancer treatment in the past year. It would have been nice for you to just say hi. It's okay that she's dying and literally has days to live. I just tried to make my daughter's last wishes happen. You shouldn't have even reached out to us because then I could have just told Kira that we tried. I told her that you messaged and I told her that you wanted to say hi and instead you blew off a dying 10 year old girl for days. It's all good. So clearly the mom is very upset over this because she feels like Snape Wolf is messing with her kid's feelings, especially when she's going through the last stages of her life right now. And the mother started to post about this over Instagram and Snape Wolf responds back to her saying, no need to be rude, I said I would do it. It's Christmas and my family is visiting from out of town. Then the mother responds back one last time saying, we are good and the mother blocks Sniper Wolf. And this is why people are so upset with Sniper Wolf right now because they feel like Sniper Wolf could have easily just contacted this girl and she could have talked with her for a few minutes or even sent her a small little video but apparently Sniper Wolf was just so busy that she kept having to put this off meanwhile this girl is dying and she really wants this final wish from her favorite YouTuber now for those of you who don't know Keemstar hates Sniper Wolf okay these guys have had a lot of beef in the past and they obviously do not like each other both of them just absolutely hate the other person's guts well last night Keemstar called out Sniper Wolf over this whole situation and he posted a Twitter video here exposing Sniper Wolf and this video blew up up. It is over a quarter million views right now. There is this girl, she's 10 years old, she's dying of cancer. Her dream and her wish is to meet SS Sniper Wolf. Anyhow, Adam, trying to make this 10 year old's dreams come true, gets a hold of Sexy Sniper Wolf or SS Sniper Wolf, and she agrees to talk to the kid dying of cancer. She set it up with her mom. I got the text conversations. So they have a date to do it, right? Sniper Wolf blows it off, completely blows it off. She's posted on Instagram that she's out to dinner, all right? She's, she's, she's out partying and living it up. And this 10 year old is literally dying right now, surrounded by friends and family, dying right now. Sniper Wolf just blew this entire thing. She, she had a scheduled time to FaceTime her and she just didn't do it. You have to be a certain piece of shit to fucking do this. If you see this at all, make the FaceTime call right now because the kid is literally dying right now. Now almost immediately after Keemstar posted this video calling out Sniper Wolf, Sniper Wolf clapped back and she was upset with Keemstar. She responds saying, after all these years, you're still a piece of shit. I was trying to set up a time to video chat, but there was an issue with the time difference. So we rescheduled and the mother is trying to expose me now? Here is the chat. And Sniper Wolf shows the same DM conversation that we shared with you guys. She is saying here that she was trying to set up a time, but they couldn't set one up. And it looks like Sniper Wolf is even surprised that the mother is trying to expose her over this. Sniper Wolf then says, I told her multiple times I would love to video chat her daughter, but we couldn't find a time that worked. My family is visiting and got sick, so I haven't had time. Now there are a lot of people that disagree with Sniper Wolf's response on this they're saying that it's super easy for her to just quickly go and contact this girl or make her a video it's only going to take a few minutes and that she should end up doing it soon because we don't know how long this girl has left one person responds saying to be fair no one is too busy to step aside for five minutes hey family i'm just going to go and facetime this little girl because she's dying it would mean the world to her it will be five or ten minutes okay it's not that hard one person responds saying why though this person responds back saying why because she committed herself to to it and she should honor it. Imagine if John Cena could have be bothered to go do a Make-A-Wish one day. Then Sniper Wolf herself jumped in on this conversation saying, are you dumb? I said that I'm doing it, so I'm doing it. I never ghosted. I was trying to find a time that worked and she blocked me. The creator Sid Alpha tweeted this out about the situation. He says, unlike scumbags like Sniper Wolf, if a kid like that wanted to have a meeting with me, I would feel honored and that fucking kid would be guaranteed to have my undivided attention, as opposed to her deciding to blow it off and go partying in Instead, another person responds saying, it's sad to see this poor kid, all she wanted was something small that meant a lot to her, but yet Sniper Wolf refuses to give that time to help make the kid at peace. Will Sniper Wolf herself respond to these people saying, are you guys 
fucking stupid. So she's obviously very upset that people are mad at her for this. She's saying here that she tried to set up a time, but they weren't able to make something work. This person responds back to Sniper Wolf saying, I may be stupid, but prove us wrong and make that girl her wish. Would you meet her in person or a video call or blow it off? Your choice, time is ticking. Now Sniper Wolf responds back saying the mom blocked her after contacting Keemstar. Now we've already made it clear that both Keemstar and Sniper Wolf hate each other and Keemstar has been further exposing this story. He just posted a drama alert on this entire story where he calls out Sniper Wolf again here and this whole thing has been blowing up even more. Well after Keemstar posted his drama alert on the situation, Sniper Wolf responded on YouTube. She posted a comment on her latest video saying, hello friends, there seems to be a huge misunderstanding going around. I have a big fan who is terminally ill and the mother wanted me to speak to her because it would make her happy. I was trying to schedule a time to talk to her because originally when I tried to talk, there was a time zone difference and the child was asleep. So I told her that we can try again the next day because I keep my promises. I tried to reschedule at a time that could work for the child, but I was suddenly blocked by the mother. I did not ghost or ignore the child. I kept trying to do it. The source of this twisted story is from a known liar with no credibility who does these things to create drama. People are saying I horribly ignored this, which is absolutely not what happened. I've also spoken to the child privately now as well. I did everything I can to get in contact again, and I have sent her a video message and spent a few hours talking to the girl today. Sniper Wolf then posted to Twitter showing us a DM conversation that she had with Kiara herself, and apparently she did really fulfill her promise. She finally sent Kiara a video, and obviously Kiara was very happy here. She says, thank you so much. You made my dream come true. I love you so much. I'm going to make a video myself. But Sniper Wolf is still very upset with Keemstar. She tweeted out again saying, too bad Keemstar was too much of a piece of shit to contact her mom and ask for an update before twisting the story. Didn't even have the decency to post her GoFundMe in his video or mention Kiara by name. She then decided to go after Adam22. He's the guy who originally said that he would try to get her in contact with Kiara. She says, Adam22, I have no idea who you are, but you said that you tried to get me to meet Kiara. Why are you lying about contacting me and saying that I didn't respond? There's no message from you on Instagram, and I don't usually use Twitter. One fan responds saying, Adam22 and Keemstar probably planned out this whole lie just to get money and followers from you. Sniper Wolf responds back saying, he's done this before, and he'll do it again. So Sniper Wolf is actively going going after everyone involved in this story and she says that they don't actually care about Kira and that they're just trying to get her cancelled. Now Keemstar fought back, he responded to Sniper Wolf saying the only reason Sniper Wolf sent the video, which was 72 hours late, was because Keemstar told Twitter about her ghosting the terminally ill fan. Sniper Wolf hasn't taken any accountability at all for her actions, she is spinning narratives like she's innocent. We won't forget this. Keemstar then posted this video to Twitter responding to Sniper Wolf. Not once, anywhere, on social media, on your Twitter, on your YouTube channel, on your Instagram, anywhere, have you said sorry? Not once! It's Keemstar's fault! It's the mom's fault! It's the kid's fault for sleeping! It's everyone's fault but yours! You have done exactly what I knew you would do. You have proven me a thousand percent right. When I say to the fucking community that you're a piece of shit, you back it up by every fucking tweet, by every YouTube post, by you just blaming everyone except for yourself because you're a piece of shit. So all drama aside, this story is very serious and I honestly don't feel comfortable making money off of a video like this. So I will be donating all the proceeds and everything that this video makes to uh, Kiara's GoFundMe. I'll also leave a link in the description for GoFundMe as well so you guys can check it out. Obviously, it just doesn't feel right. This is way too real right now. Kiara's family is going through it and I think they definitely need the support and help from us. Now our next story here comes from Twitch. So recently there's been a lot of big Twitch streamers that have decided to stream full length TV shows and movies on their Twitch channels. That's right, they'll go in the Just Chatting section and they'll be just streaming TV shows and movies all day on their streams. Well, this has become very concerning to other big streamers and people in the industry because they think that these big TV and movie companies are going to start coming down hard on streamers and they're going to start taking down these streamer streams for playing their content. The huge streamer Co Carnage tweeted this out. He says, random question with no real context. I'm noticing a lot of streamers are watching shows and reacting. No shade, more power to 
to them, but I mean, is it okay to do? Are these like public domain shows or something? Do larger companies just not care about folks restreaming their stuff? A Twitch staff member responded saying, it's absolutely not okay. Just like it has never been okay to stream music. This is just as DMCA-able as anything else. Hard to say why streamers have not been targeted yet, but just like music, it's probably just a matter of time. Another big streamer tweeted this out. He says, hey fucking streamers watching movies like it's no big deal on your channels. You were all poking a big fucking bear and expecting it to lie still. I'd figure after the last couple years you would all learn, but sure, let's have the movie industry breathing down our necks. And this has started a conversation in the streaming community right now on reaction content because a lot of big streamers right now are reacting to videos on every one of their streams and a lot of this content that they're reacting to is obviously copyrighted and you have creators debating on whether some of this content is fair use or not. One creator responded saying reaction content is really pushing the limits. Honestly, I'm surprised enough already that so many YouTubers and streamers make reaction content where they literally have been eating a sandwich, watching a video and make 10 to 20 times what that creator did via donations watching it. It's bad. And our next story for today comes from the YouTuber known as Mama Max. Now, Mama Max is a huge YouTuber. His videos make millions of views, and in his videos, he exposes predators, okay? So obviously, people really like the fact that he's making these videos because he's exposing these people for who they really are, and it looks like he is covering some really serious things that people need to know about. Now, last year, we covered a story where we talked about Max having his videos taken down by YouTube, and the entire YouTube community was supporting him over this. They were saying that it was messed up that his videos were getting taken down, especially because he was doing some something that people think is good. Well, it looks like Max is still running into some very big problems when it comes to uploading his videos to YouTube because YouTube is still taking down his content. Last month, Max uploaded a video where he was exposing a predator and this video was taken down and he tried to appeal it and he tweeted out saying, my appeal was denied immediately. He says, I'm giving you the opportunity now to resolve this peacefully. You have one week to make the right decision and spare yourself from another situation. So he's saying that if YouTube doesn't reinstate his video, he's gonna talk about this. He's gonna be vocal about how YouTube is messing with this content where he's literally exposing predators. Well, YouTube did not reinstate his video, so he decided to call out YouTube. And two days ago, he posted a video called Pick a Side YouTube, and this is a huge video where he's going after YouTube, saying that they need to pick a side, because at this point, it looks like that they are protecting the predators in his videos by taking down his content like this. And Max is saying that YouTube is being hypocritical. I mean, they're taking down his content while they're leaving up content on the site that is just as bad, if not worse, and clearly violent violates their terms of service. And he is calling for YouTube to pick a side. Are they going to let his content stay on the platform or are they going to continue taking it down and indirectly protecting these people who he is exposing in these videos? How many bloody times do we have to do this dance? You fuck with us, we fuck with you, and history repeats itself. Whether it's intentional or not, you endlessly punish those of us who create content in response to injustice, speaking up for victims like children and pursuing the perpetrators. It is volatile, intense, disturbing, upsetting, raw, and real. Because that is the subject matter it is covering, and that is the way it should be covered, as my audience many of whom are CSA survivors, have instructed me to do. But no matter how vital the video may be to them, you take down our shit and continue to help absolutely no one besides the evil people we are trying to expose. And the survivors continue to scream in agonizing silence. Now this video completely blew up. It has nearly a million views right now, and there are a ton of creators that are agreeing with this, saying that they feel like this is completely true. They're saying that you can't expose real issues without getting censored on YouTube anymore. Max then started the hashtag pick a side YouTube, and he is now calling out YouTube directly here, and he's trying to get more people involved with this whole situation and this whole movement, and this tweet completely blew up. It has nearly 30,000 likes right now. There are tons of people talking about this over Twitter. One YouTuber who has dealt with his fair share of YouTube YouTube censoring him, Count Dankula tweeted this out. He says, I just watched the Mama Max video and was nodding my head all the way through it. Free speech has long been a massive issue with YouTube, but primarily it has been over spicy jokes. But this isn't just spicy jokes, it's the grooming of children, something infinitely more serious. Investigative journalism has always had a history of shining a light on very dark and very horrible things. It does this to make people aware of a serious problem so that they may better protect themselves 
and their loved ones, but also to assist in dealing with the problem itself. However, a lot of YouTubers that talk about these things very often have their content censored, blacklisted, removed, soft blocked, and they sometimes even get a strike for their troubles, when all they were doing was trying to make people aware of a very serious problem. Now the YouTuber Muda made a huge video on this yesterday where he covers his issues with YouTube's terms of service and their whole review system, and he says at the end of this video that YouTube's whole review system needs to be redesigned and fixed for mature content because we should allow mature content on the platform, especially when you're covering real issues like in Mama Max's videos. I can see why this is frustrating to Max and really any creator out there that covers content like this. When you're legitimately trying to raise awareness of something bad going on and you in turn get a strike, I no doubt it pisses you off. But I just wanted to add my take onto it, my little nuanced belief that this is obviously a big issue. And obviously I think going forward, YouTube needs to have a better assessment of policing the content that is uploaded generally around, a better method of reviewing the content. Honestly, the review system itself needs a bit of a redesign because the way that it exists right now, it feels like no human actually watches the content that we post. And when it comes to darker, edgier content, I honestly feel like YouTube should really eat up and allow that content. YouTube is a place where anybody can upload. We literally have YouTube kids to separate the kiddos from the adults. So why is it that even to this day, edgier content, not even edgy content, but content that's just mature in nature has to suffer so many issues absolutely baffles me. Now, while there has been a lot of YouTubers agreeing with Max on this and promoting his movement, there also has been a lot of YouTubers that have disagreed with Max on how he's gone about talking about this. They feel like he's been way too heavy handed with this and he is just doing this for the shock factor when in reality, this is going to hurt the movement. The commentary YouTuber Kavos tweeted this out. He says also what the actual fuck is this tweet? It's all just done for shock factor because at first glance, it looks like he's calling some of these creators predators. He then says the hashtag pick aside YouTube is so fucking cringe. I'm all for stopping predators but this ain't it. You tweeting a cringe hashtag isn't going to do shit. Shut the fuck up. Kavos then further explains that he feels like this message could have been delivered much better. So there's definitely a lot of people in the commentary community that feel like Max's presentation was way too heavy handed and the guy could have toned it down and it would have made a lot more sense and it would have turned a lot more people on to his whole movement. But this whole hashtag and movement has still been gaining a ton of traction and it's even caught the eye of some very, very well-known names in the entertainment industry. One of these names being Chris Hansen. That's right, Chris Hansen from To Catch a Predator has gotten in contact with Max. He tweeted out yesterday showing that Chris Hansen just recently followed him on Twitter and and it looks like Chris Hansen himself might be looking into this story. Now our final story for today also has to do with YouTubers dealing with YouTube taking down their videos and this comes from the YouTuber known as Call Me Kevin. Now Kevin tweeted this out. He says, it looks like I can't upload today. YouTube has flagged my video as a YouTube policy violation or other issue with no further information. I rarely criticize YouTube, but the lack of support is so frustrating. Making videos for years and I still have no partner manager. Now the YouTuber and streamer Jay Schlatt responded actually agreeing with him here. He says, same man, I spent two hours trying to figure out why why my video was being demonetized. There's been a lot more problems recently, kind of concerning. Kevin responds back saying, sorry it's happening to you too, it's frustrating to waste so much time. I honestly think they don't give a reason because they aren't confident the automated system works. Shalat says it doesn't work. My original thumbnail was causing my video to be demonetized. I spent hours trying to find something that would work. What worked? Renaming the original thumbnail file's name from stream thumbnail to a bunch of random characters. Such BS. Kevin responds saying, holy shit, it's even worse than I thought. Now this is clearly not an isolated incident. There's been a lot of YouTubers dealing with issues on YouTube right now when it comes to having their videos taken down or even age restricted. The YouTuber Bulblax recently had one of his videos age restricted as well. And we even had one of our own videos age restricted just last week. This is one of our recent videos where we talked about the whole Hassan situation and we talked about the speed story as well. But to be honest, we don't know what story or what part of the video got the video age restricted because they didn't give us any information on why they age restricted it. And honestly, I've rewatched the video over and over again and I I just don't know why YouTube decided to restrict our content like that. It just doesn't make any sense. And this is another reason why people are so upset with YouTube right now, because a lot of YouTubers are running into these same problems where they just don't know what's wrong with their video and why YouTube is taking down their videos or demonetizing them or age restricting them. I mean, all these can be very annoying, especially if you're a YouTuber covering real issues like Max and his whole predator videos, where he's trying to expose people doing awful things. And that's it for our video today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to leave a thumbs up and I'll see you later. Peace.